Let us pray. Most holy and loving God, we do come to you with our hearts filled with distractions and sorrow and happiness all mixed into one. And so we pray, O oh Lord, that we may take this Sabbath time this morning to rest in you, to rest in your word, that we may lay anything down that is keeping us from truly being present to you, and that as we continue to listen to your words of scripture, that they be life-changing, transforming words as you have always intended them to be for our lives. We ask all this in the name of Jesus Christ and all God's precious people said, Amen. Today we continue with our series on stress. Yay! Aren't you excited? I think so, because all the more I've gotten more articles about stress this week from you guys. <laughs> Something's clicking. Uh, we do not pretend to get rid of stress. That's impossible. It truly is. We wouldn't be human if we didn't have stress in our lives. But we do pray that God can help us sort through our lives in the midst of stress. And we've been walking up through Psalm 23 as a way to help us, guide us. We began with verse 1 of Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And we talked about worry. And we talked about how truly when we become so wrought with worry that the best thing to do is to pray about it and try to take life one day at a time. And then we looked at verse 2. He maketh me to lie down and drink pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. And we talked about our busy lives and how important it is to take a Sabbath for that vital rest that we need in our Lord. And today for many of you is Sabbath, so how will we live out the rest of our day? And then we looked at the first part of verse 3, He restoreth my soul. And we talked about how the damaged emotions specifically of grief and guilt um, can wear us down and, and how God truly wants us to rest in Him and lay it at the feet of Jesus. And last Sunday we studied the second part of verse 2. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness, for, verse 3. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And we talked about the stress of indecision and how to know our God's will for our life, we truly must be in prayer. Today we move to verse 4, and you've already heard me tell the children, it's yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Today we're going to talk about adversity. So let us together first pray all of Psalm 23 together. It's King James Version. It's one that brings comfort to most people during funerals. Together we pray, The Lord, the Lord is my shepherd, shepherd I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. The stress of adversity in our lives is very real. There's not one person here who will escape adverse conditions in our lives. We must just go straight through it. It reminds me of, of a story of driving into a rainstorm. I think it was more common at my previous church down at the coast that was very common to see these walls of, of rain, right? Sometimes it happens here where you're driving and you, it, you're in sunlight and it's coming and you're driving right into it. And so you get off your cell phone because we were already supposed to not be on it. Guilty. And we grip. We turn on lights. We get our wipers ready, ready. We're, we're ready to go through the storm. But then if you just look for a split second just a little bit, because you're driving, remember? 
You'll see the cars coming out of the storm. Their lights are on, their wipers are going fast, their car's clean. They're coming out of the storm into the light as we're going into the storm. I think that that's the thing about the stress of adversity. We want sunshine all the time. We don't want the rain in our lives. But we know in Texas what happens when we don't get rain, right? Drought. Water restrictions, dried up grass, dried up rivers. You get desert without rain. You see, we must have the rain and the sadness and the difficulties so that when we experience the sun and all the blessings that God does give us, it's so much better. It's just so much better. We must trudge through the valleys in order to get to those peaks and celebrate the peaks. Our psalm writer David says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. In Israel, there's a real place called the valley of the shadow of death. It's a deep, dark canyon with very steep walls, very narrow. The sun only hits it around high noon, and the rest of the time it's in the shadows. And this is where robbers would often hide and then, uh, you know, attack the people that are passing through. Now, I would guess that David would have personally known about this valley as a shepherd boy, or he would have heard about it through his ancestors. See, we also know about our own personal valleys, personally, firsthand, don't we? We know those moments in life when you just can't come up for air. It's just too hard. And the people that are trying to make you feel better, it's just not time yet. Sadly, dark valleys are unavoidable, which causes us stress. You may be going through a dark valley right now, or you may be coming out of one. But dark valleys are unavoidable. And because that's the case, it's even more imperative that we seek God's guidance and will and love and mercy in the midst of all of our dark valleys. They're also unpredictable, which is probably the worst part. You can't really place them or time them, can you? I mean, even if you are with a loved one who has been sick for a long, long time, something still happens that jolts you and causes you to fall off track a little bit. You know, you're just never prepared, are you? Like, when you have a flat tire, have I ever said, or have you ever said, oh, I'm so glad I had that flat tire right now. Right? Now's the perfect timing. No, it's never the perfect timing for adversity. And dark valleys are impartial. It's very normal to ask, why me, Lord? Why me? And yet, if you didn't ask that question, I'd wonder if you're human. Dark valleys are not reserved, though, for just the bad guys. It's for everyone. Even the good guys experienced deep grief and hard times. Matthew 5.45 speaks to this. For God makes the sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. Now, there is good news to the dark valleys, but I'm not going to get to that yet. Because I think that sometimes we rush too fast to get out of our dark spots. I hear from persons who are grieving that they just want to get it done and over with. <coughs> I expressed that myself when both of my parents died. Which, of all days, this God's timing with the sermon series is completely crazy. Today is my dad's birthday, and tomorrow is my mom's anniversary of her death. So I remember very vague, clearly how, even though I studied all these books on grief, how I was in that dark place and I didn't want to stay there. I wanted to move out as fast as possible. I went to work way too soon and guess what? Got stressed. And it took counseling and friends to say, just sit with it. Just sit with it, stay where you are. Even though you want the light, just stay there for a little while. 
Because here's the wonderful part of our verse today. It says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. It doesn't say, though I run through the valley of the shadow of death. Sometimes we have to walk, but with sure and certain footing that we do not walk alone. That there is guidance all the way through. We have to take our time through this process of dealing with adversity because if we don't, then the stress will be that much more. But when you are ready, you have to know that there are good, there's good news, always good news. See, dark valleys are temporary. You know those thunderstorms we're driving into, obviously there's an end because the car on the other side is coming out. It's temporary. They don't last forever. You may feel like it's not ever going to go away, and that's understandable. But see, God always provides relief because God does not want us to stay in our dark period for long. In 1 Peter 5.10, we hear wonderful words of hope. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ will with himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. And, believe it or not, dark valleys have a purpose. We can always learn something about ourselves when we're in the depths of despair. We can learn about our strong resolve to be able to handle anything that comes our way. And our deep faith that we know guides us through these times in a God that loves us. See, valleys, they're part of our life, natural landscape. And even though we wish they'd go away, they do shape us into who we are, God's good crea creations. And that's why we don't run through the dark valleys. We walk and we learn and we pray and we grow closer to Christ. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Such confident words. Aren't these the coolest words out of the whole Bible? Such confidence. Written by one who knows without a doubt, you are with me. Your rod and your staff of a shepherd guiding, keeping us safely to his side. Comfort me. It's a prayer. You see, for thou art with me. You are with me, Lord. It's a prayer. In the midst of so many difficulties, we must trust that God is with us with every single step that we take. When we go through difficulties, I invite you to pray to God and be real and honest. And if you're angry, that's okay. God can take it. My goodness. Of all people. So be real and be in prayer because death and all adversity is not the end. It's only the light that shines. I invite you to pray it with me and claim it for yourself. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Let us pray. Most holy and loving God, we come to you in these moments of silence. We pray that these words be real for our lives. We thank you for your always present spirit within us. And we claim this, that you are with us every step that we take. And we pray, O oh Lord, that as we leave here today, that we may be nourished to walk with us who also need your presence. That we may be your hands and feet and spirit in this world. We ask this in the precious and loving name of Jesus and all God's precious people said, Amen. Amen.